Why does nobody want to talk about my new hair? The amount of times I have trimmed, shaved, lined up, and cut completely off my hair with no fanfare, it's different. no reaction. It's, it's, it's hair. Different. It's Jessica, it's different. hair. Who cares? You don't have any. That doesn't count. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. We're going to give you our opinions on the winners and losers of this year's 2024 NBA trade deadline. I've got two winners and a loser. What do you have? For a winner, I'd go with, I think, Boston. I like them getting Xavier Tillman. You got a loser? I have a loser. Who is it? I think all of us. I think all of us lost this because it was kind of just boring. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Jordan Adams, a.k.a. Cheeseburg. We had to get on this weight, man. That boy, that beat, that man, he, man, his body fat was, I want to say about a good 25% body fat, man. That boy, that was riding all outside. You think he likes you calling him Cheeseburg? I don't think he appreciates that. I don't think he appreciates yeah, that. Well, he was my rook. I get to call him whatever. That's my rookie. So what? The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Ford Tough Studio and FedEx Forum. It's the Gary Paris Show, presented by Ortho South on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Gary Parrish. All right. I'm here. My name is Gary Parrish. I'm speaking to you from Midtown Manhattan, New York City. Ben and Doyle back in Memphis producing the program. Glad he's with me. Glad you're with me. Hope you're getting through the day. That's the can. And I hope you didn't expect the University of Memphis to somehow, some way, get into the NCAA tournament or the city of Memphis to get the most interesting first and second round pot in this NCAA tournament because neither of those things happen. Happy day after selection Sunday with our college basketball momentarily. First though, quickly, let me set today's schedule for you. Michael Eves, host Sports Center for ESPN, joins me on Mondays in the second segment. He's going to be here in about 20 minutes. I'll talk college basketball with him. Also though, Justin Fields being traded to the Steelers. Pittsburgh's quarterback room looks a lot different these days. Scotty Scheffler won a second straight PGA Tour event yesterday. I'll talk about all these things and more. Mike Leaves going to be here in about 20 minutes. When I finish talking to Mike, take a break, come back. Five more things you need to know at which point we're going to discuss. Five previously undiscussed stories among them. Desmond Bain returned to the Grizzlies lineup this weekend. The first game for the team's second leading score in more than two months. I'll tell you how he did in about 40 minutes. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, he says the Bears... Chicago Bears should take into consideration that Caleb Williams played college football in California before deciding to select him in the 2024 NFL draft. I'm not sure it's sound logic, but I'll share it with you in just a bit. SmackDown was inside FedEx Forum on Friday night. The Rock was there, made a John Morant joke, looked like a fun night on television. Big Bet Bennett was in the building. Get his thoughts on that in the third segment. Dodgers manager. Dave Roberts said this weekend that uh, Shohei Otani might play in the field this season, recovering from uh, elbow surgery. And did you realize Major League Baseball season starts in two days? Buddy, like two days. <clears throat> I did realize that. Have you seen what the Baltimore Orioles are doing in spring training? Uh, Bennett, I, I'll be honest, I haven't. They're killing it. Oh, wow. Well, congrats on your spring training championship. Mm -hmm. Th those are fun. The run starts now. 
The run say hey, the run starts now. Bennett's fired up about spring training baseball. The season does start in two days in a on another continent. It's a wild situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about it a little later on in the show. And a former Arkansas State football standout, ex scout for Bennett's Tennessee Titans, now works at Texas A and M. You seen this story? No. Been charged with first degree murder. Murder. After allegedly poisoning his girlfriend who was pregnant with his child. Can't do that. No. Can't do that. Fellow's name is Blaze Taylor. He's the son of longtime college football coach. You might recognize this name, Trooper Taylor. It's an ugly story. Needless to say, I'll give you all the details during a segment we call Five More Things You Need to Know. Then we'll eventually do GP's carry out and we'll uh that's what we'll call it a day. So so that's the rundown. We got a lot to get to, but I did want to start with college basketball because the 68 team bracket for the 2024 NCAA tournament, it was uh, unveiled last night on CBS. It's America's most watched network. It's the network of stars. As expected, Penny Hardaway's Tigers were, were not included. Too many goofy losses in a league that's too goofy. Speaking of, the AAC ended up being a two-bid league. UAB got the auto bid. Congrats to AK. FAU got an at-large bid, an eight seed somehow. And can we stop here for just a second, if you don't yeah, mind, Bennett? Let's let's go ahead and do it. I had Florida Atlantic, those owls. I had them in my preseason top 10. Actually, the top five. But let's just say top 10. I love Dusty May. I've known him since he was an assistant for Mike Davis at UAB like 15 years ago. What he's done at FAU to even build to this point is incredible. What I'm certain he'll do uh, somewhere bigger sometime soon, I'm sure it'll be incredible as well. But FAU as an eight seed is symbolic of the biggest issue with the bracket the committee gave us last night, and that's that the seeding is an absolute joke. FAU as an eight seed makes no sense whatsoever. The Florida Atlantic Owls, Two and two in quadrant one, eight and three in quadrant two. So 10 and five in the first two quadrants. That's great if you stop there, but they only have two quadrant one wins and they have three losses outside of the first two quadrants, including two quadrant four defeats. Remember how bad that Rice loss was for Memphis? Oh, I remember. FAU's got two of those. Quadrant four loss to Florida Gulf Coast. Quadrant four loss to Bryant. Then they took a quadrant three loss to Temple in the AAC tournament. A number eight seed, if you struggle with math, is like top 32 in the country. That's what it should come out to, right? You should have to be in the top 32 in the country to be a top eight seed in the NCAA tournament. FAU isn't in the top 32 of literally any computer. You can't find one. Not Net, Ken Palm, Torvik, KPI, BPI, anything. It doesn't exist. So they don't have um, the computer numbers to support an eight seed. You go, okay, well, maybe they got these big wins then. Maybe they got these big wins. I just told you they only have two quadrant one wins, so they don't have that. So then maybe you're thinking, well, uh, you know, they uh, maybe they got to, maybe they didn't have any bad losses, so they're clean in quadrant three, quadrant four. No, they have more bad losses than most teams that got at large bids, whether it's an eight seed, nine seed, 10 seed, or whatever. By the way, the other eight seeds are Utah State, Nebraska, Mississippi State. Those eight seeds, are a combined 44 and one in quadrant three and quadrant four. And the only loss is a loss by Mississippi State to Southern three months ago by one point when their best player, Tola Smith, wasn't playing. That's, that's what other eight seeds have in mm -hmm. quadrant three, quadrant four. FAU is 15 and three in quadrant three and quadrant four. They got three losses. The other three eight seeds combined have one. FAU has three by themselves. So, like, I don't get it. I don't. I'm not greatly offended by it. What do I care? But it just, I'm offended by just things that make no sense in all aspects of life. And this is very clearly one of those deals where it just doesn't make any sense. Again, just comparing them to the eight seeds, they got way worse losses. And then the other eight seeds, Nebraska has four quadrant one wins. Utah State has four quadrant one wins. Mississippi State has four quadrant one wins. FAU, again, only two. There's nothing to support it. They don't have the wins that the other eight seeds have. They've got way worse losses than the other eight seeds have. They don't have the computer numbers to support it. 38th in strength of record, 39th in the net, 41st at Ken Palm, 52nd at Torvik. So if you'd have told me this time yesterday, GP, I, 
I can tell you one of these things is true. One of them is definitely true. Pick which one you think is most likely. FAU is an eight seed or FAU is out of the tournament. I would have said FAU is out of the tournament. It makes much more sense for them to get left out than it does to be an eight seed. But they got an eight seed. I guess that reputation from last season mattered to somebody in the selection committee room because otherwise it makes no sense whatsoever. Mini rant over. Big Bet Bennett. Let's talk about what's coming to FedEx Forum. Can I interest you in Colgate, Baylor, New Mexico, Clemson, Texas A&M, Nebraska, and Houston Longwood? Does that get you fired up for a Friday Sunday pod? Uh, I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, I, I'm, I hope that all of those fan bases bring a bunch of fans down to uh, FedEx Forum and we get a big showing for, uh, for our NCAA tournament uh, round here. Uh, I will say that I've been, I've been saying all along, the one that you really don't want is Houston because I don't think they're going to travel as good as any of the other one seeds, and they ended up getting Houston. So hopefully the Houston fans show out. I mean, that's been an issue in the past. So we'll see. As far as, like, the the – I mean, dude, you actually do have some fun matchups. I think that the basketball is going to be really good. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there. Um, What's your fun matchup? What are you looking forward to? You looking uh, forward to that New Mexico Clemson clash? Okay, I thought that New Mexico was like a fun. That's they a are. fun. Okay, that that's like a team that I'm rooting for. I'm I'm picking. Everybody's talking about New Mexico and how college basketball is better when New Mexico's good. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right, let's. Where did, that, where did that come from? I don't know. I don't. I, I never heard God, that. I've heard that from multiple people. I, I mean, do, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I'm like. I, I'm getting it. I'm, I'm literally, I, I just fin filled out a bracket. I'm not going to lie to you, GP. I did not watch. I know I didn't watch as much college basketball as you this weekend. And I didn't watch a whole lot at all because I was at SmackDown. I was at the Grizzlies game on Saturday. And frankly, I was depressed as hell about the Tigers the entire weekend. So yeah. I'm like, I'm getting all, I'm, I expect to learn a lot today because I'm gathering all this info like in real time. Okay. New Mexico is fun. You've got that right. Um, is college basketball better when New Mexico is good? I mean, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, I like I, you know, I like Richard Pitino. Um, I, I the Pit is one of the historically significant places in college basketball history. That's their home arena, uh, and now the 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 Lobos are coming to FedEx Forum. It's fine with me. You got one national championship winning coach coming to FedEx Forum. That's Scott Drew at Baylor, and then uh. The son of a national championship winning coach, that's Richard Pertino at New Mexico. Let's go. You know, that, let's go. Um, you got uh, two teams that Memphis beat, Clemson and, and Texas A&M. Fred Hoiberg is coming to town. Japanese sensation, Keisei Tominaga. Oh, like I know Keisei. him. Okay, yeah, I'm actually, that'll be fun. That'll be everybody, fun. Yeah, everybody likes Keisei Tominaga. Kelvin Sampson coming back to FedEx Forum. Hey, he could be a national championship coach. Give him three weeks. Maybe he's joining Scott Drew as a national championship coach. Hey, what if I told you on Friday you could go to FedEx Forum, watch one man who's already won a national championship coach, and another man who soon will do the same thing? What if I told you that? Would that get you to Ticketmaster.com? Oh yeah, I'm. I, listen, I'm going to be there, man. I'm excited. I, I, I'm. I'm always excited to watch some good basketball inside this building. So it'll be good. Col Colgate, Colgate's coming to town. Okay. And Ain't every day you get to watch some toothpaste, play basketball. That ain't every day. Nah, I've used Colgate in my day. I I you I, I f with Colgate. Yeah, I f with Colgate. You're trying to save a little money. Yep. Yeah, when you know when you when you're trying to figure out what do I need, what do I need today? My teeth to be a little wider, or maybe to save a buck. You know. Yeah. That's a decision we've all made at some point. Yep. You know. Hey. You know. Oh man, Crest Crest getting real proud. Crest getting real proud of what they sell yeah, it. Crest getting a little pricey. Oh, Crest. Crest got that 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 that, that teeth whitening. Mm -hmm. Oh, they like this. This is seven dollars. And then you look over there and Colgate's just sitting there like, yo, you can get me for four. Mm -hmm. Colgate's like, Colgate's like, yo, I'll make you, you know, I'll I'll get the job done. Yeah, right. You know? It gets the job done. That's, get, right. Col that's what Colgate's slogan should be. <laughs> we get the job done. That Colgate. would actually be an epic slogan for them. Colgate, save a couple of bucks. We get the job done. Uh -huh. So Colgate's coming. They'll be battling Baylor. And then the Longwood Longwoods, you know? I'm, I'm not familiar with their work as much. Well, they're the Longwood Lancers, but I think it'd be funnier if they were the Longwood Longwoods. That'd be, that'd be a sick name. I've, I mean, I've been pushing it for years. So far, they've been, uh, they haven't been receptive to my suggestion. 
But, you know, now I've got them coming to Memphis. We'll see. I do hate that all these people are coming to my hometown and I'm not going to be there. Like, I hate not being there. I mean, I hate, you know, I miss you, but I'd like to see Scott Drew and, and Buzz Williams and Richard Patino and Fred Hoiberg and Kelvin Sampson. I'd like to see all these people coming to my hometown, but I'll be, while you're inside FedEx Forum, I'll be right back here. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, though, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be there tomorrow, and then, uh, you know, then I, I got to turn right back around. I, I, as, I'm, as I'm struggling through this day, I'm like, I don't even know why I'm going home. Outside of I, I was wondering myself. <laughs> outside of I, I, I'm, I'm dying to see my family. Yeah, you know, but like I'm just flying home and I'll turn right back around and come. I'll just, I mean, I guess you pick up some Delta miles, I guess, but I'm just flying home and then coming right back. Like I will leave most of my stuff at the hotel. <laughs> and just, I'll, just, I'll just be like, hey, I'll, hey, I'll pick it up. Hey, hey, guys, I'll be back in a couple of days. I'll pick all this stuff up in a couple oh, of days. Man. Hey, if you look at it for the FedEx Forum schedule on TV. We got two true TV games, two TNT games. Okay. I and, e I and Ego ain't getting nowhere close to FedEx Forum this week, Bennett. Man, true TV, that, this is their time to shine. I it swear is. I don't think about true TV until this time every single year. It's so funny because, like, if you start doing true TV, like Google searches, it yeah. all it, the auto the auto feel is always is like, what channel is true TV? How do I watch basketball on true TV? It's like people don't even think about true TV until now. And it's like, yo, where is that at? Mm -hmm. So we got two true TV games and two TNT games. All right. Good. We didn't we didn't get the big CBS, but hey, it's always next time. Right, Bennett? That's oh. that's, that's fine. That's hey, okay. it's fine. It's fine. We've got toothpaste, a national championship winning coach, and possibly the next national championship winning coach all coming to FedEx Forum. Plus, plus Buzz Williams and uh, P.J. Hall. And uh, Casey Tomanaga and uh, Richard Patino. I I is it the best pod? No. No. Is it maybe the worst? Maybe. But hey, it's still uh, eight eight college basketball teams that made the NCAA tournament. And all you got to do is go downtown to watch them. They'll be right there waiting for you on Friday. We come back. Michael Lee's going to join me. I'll talk basketball with him. It's the Gary Paris Show, presented by Ortho South. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Real country music with Cody Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best. The Leather Tour with Cody Johnson with special guest Justin Moore. Also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, <laughs> you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. <gasps> I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. We're going dancing. Welcome to Fandom 101. We need you going crazy in the stands. Oh! Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Division I men's basketball first and second rounds this March in Memphis, Tennessee. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash MVB tickets. Class dismissed. He's looking for the hot hand. Jared got the step, Woo! got the flush. There's no layups on that one. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand.
show presented by Ortho South. I'm in New York City. Ben Adoyo back in Memphis inside the Built Ford Tough Studio. And Michael Leaves, he owns Sports Center for ESPN, joins me Mondays in the second segment. Today's Monday. This is the second segment. He's right here. Michael Leaves is GP. How you doing? I'm good, man. How was your selection Sunday? Busy. It's a national and, holiday. Yeah, busy and um, long. It was a busy and, <laughs> and long day. You know what those days are like. I'm looking forward to dressing like you and getting outside. I'm going to do that in about a month. Give me a few weeks. I'm going to be right there with you. But for now, it's just a, it's a, it's a lot of talking and makeup touch up. So um, we talked to the committee chair last night, and he made it clear that there were five bid stealers in this tournament, meaning mm -hmm. that there were five teams from multi-bid leagues that got auto bids that shrunk the bubble by five teams. For all intents and purposes, what you traditionally think of as a 68-team field became a 63-team field. Seton Hall, Oklahoma, Pitt, Indiana State, so high majors and mid-majors both get left out. Do you think this is going to be the ammo they use when they want to expand the NCAA tournament? They're going to point to 2024. It'd be easy to do so, but right. the pro here's the thing, though, Gary. If, if they want to expand it, they don't really need an excuse, right? Because, I mean, they can do whatever they want, technically. And the real reason they're doing it is for more money. More games equals a bigger television deal from CBS and Turner and everyone involved in it, right? So if they want to do it, it's all about money. But if they want to try to, you know, mask it in a certain way and present a certain argument, then they can say, well, if the field was bigger, then these teams would have been in the field. I don't care what the number is, Gary. And we've seen this with college football. Whatever the number is for your playoff, there's always going to be teams that just didn't make it. They were right there on the edge because there has to be some type of cutoff. If the number is definite, somebody's definitely not going to make the field, right? Um, it, look, the goal is to crown a national champion, and ideally you have the best team in basketball be able to win a certain number of games to determine that. But ultimately, not all the best teams will make the tournament because it's just a matter of numbers and they can't all get in. Your Kentucky Wildcats get the three seed in the South. They open against Oakland in Pittsburgh on Thursday. So that's a homecoming game for, for John Calipari. I'm sure yeah. that'll be nice for he and his family. Then in round of 32, it's either Texas Tech or NC State. I know nothing's guaranteed, but when I look at that, I like Kentucky's draw. Do you like Kentucky's draw? Uh, I said this on social media uh, last night when the draw came out. Kentucky fans should be very pleased with where they ended up. Seeding as well as placement in the bracket. Um, based on how this season has played out and also recent history in the NCAA tournament, there would be a lot of reasons for people to have uh, some doubt about Kentucky winning their first round game for that matter. We've seen that happen, but also just advancing into the field. But if they were going to do it, I think the team they have right now in that first weekend, give them a really good opportunity to get back to the Sweet 16, something they haven't done in quite some time. And then I said this early in the week, too, that if Kentucky has to be in a bracket with the number one seed, obviously, you got to be in one, then Houston would be the best one for them to go against because Houston is great defensively, right? But Kentucky may be the best offense, may be the best scoring team in the country, right? So that defense can only go so far. Houston struggles scoring the ball. Kentucky scores uh, di has difficulty stopping the other team. So if you give me a great offense against a good defense and, and lack thereof on the other side, I'm going to take Kentucky in that matchup potentially against Houston if that was the case. Much better than if it would, would be against a rematch against North Carolina, um, especially against UConn. Now, in my bracket on ESPN's um, tournament challenge, I have UConn winning it all again, and I have them beating Kentucky. Um, it's the heartstrings that are putting Kentucky in the championship game for me, but I do believe UConn's probably the best all-around team, and to go back and repeat, it makes a lot of sense. But the thing that stood out to me yesterday, Gary, and we talked about this on SportsCenter um, once the brackets were revealed, I think UConn has the hardest route to the Final Four as a number one seed, and they have their overall number one seed. I think they got done a disservice. If they're going to be the number one seed, Overall, your bracket should not be the hardest to reach the Final Four, and I think that's what the committee did to him. It's 100% what the committee did to him because, you know, I think a lot of focus got put on Iowa State being a, a two-seed instead of a one and the yep. worst two instead of the best two. And that doesn't only screw Iowa State. It also screws UConn because suddenly yes. UConn is in a region with the second with, with with undeniably the fourth most accomplished team in college basketball this season in terms of quadrant one wins and all that stuff if yep. you were just doing resumes and took nothing on else into consideration 
Iowa State's got a top four resume in the sport. So they're your two seed. Illinois just won the Big Ten tournament. They're your three seed. And yep. Auburn is top five at Ken Palm. They're your four seed. I'm with you. UConn is so clearly, as of yesterday, the number one overall seed. The committee got that right, but they so misseeded so badly the rest of the bracket that they got the rest of the East region wrong at the detriment of UConn. And I don't remember, at least in recent memory, when we're talking about number one overall seeds, Gary, that this has happened to a yeah. number one overall seed to this degree, right? Now, there's no easy route to any Final Four. I mean, let's be serious in that regard. But there are definitely ones that are more that are harder than others. And I can't remember a, a number one overall seed getting screwed the way UConn did. Right. And, you know, they'll use it for motivation, I'm sure. But either way, let, listen, I, I, I also have them going to the title game. So I think they're going to get through it because I, I just think they're better than everybody else in the region. Right. But yeah. but they should they shouldn't have to go through what they what they it appears they're going to have to go through uh, based on the season that they they put together in advance of selection Sunday. I want to circle right back to that point you made about Houston and Kentucky. I made a similar point last night um, on CBS Sports Network. Houston has been better than Kentucky all season long. That's why they're a one seed and Kentucky's the three. But you never know when Kentucky's just going to go out and put 101 on you. And, and that becomes hard to keep up with. You can be an incredibly coached, tough, physical, defensive-minded team, and if the other team's going to go out and just put 101 on you, you, that's just that's hard to keep up with. If I'm Houston, yeah, you know, the, 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 Kentucky's not the two-seed in your region, and you are the favorite in your region, but Kentucky's right. the team that scares me the most because they might overwhelm you in a way just from a talent and athleticism perspective, where there's just nothing you can do about it. Exactly. And and right. and that is what Kentucky has going for it. If, if you're trying to find optimism for John Calipari and this team to advance deep into the tournament, what you just outlined is their number one reason to be optimistic. Because we've seen it throughout the season that they can put points up on just about anybody. If they're making shots, dude, you are in trouble. It's in <laughs> Most times, you just have to hope they are missing shots. They're going to get shots. There's no question about that. They're going to get them in a variety of ways. If they are making them at a good clip, you are in trouble. The only thing that you have really to defend them is another high-potent offense at the other end. And Houston does not have that. So, again, once we get to the tournament, you know, like I've always said, like, your season determines where you end up, right? You, you have to develop a resume to, to gain a seeding into the NCAA tournament, and then that's how the bracket's laid out. But once you get there, then it's about matchups, right? Just because the team is ranked lower than you or they don't have the same net rating as you, blah, 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 that's more about who they've played and the competition that they've played. But when it comes to direct matchups, there's nothing really definitively you can say from a uh, from a data standpoint that says this team is necessarily better than this team because if this two guard is better than this two guard, no one can defend this five at the other end, then that's a matchup problem that data can't account for, and that happens all the time in the NCAA tournament. That's why you have the upsets because it's not about the seeds. It's about the players. The former Memphis coach is going to take Kentucky into this NCAA tournament. The current Memphis coach is uh, facing criticism locally that he's really never faced before. Among the reasons I, I love talking to you is because you're a prominent national voice, but you also have a connection to our city. You used to work here. You used to live here. Penny Hardaway through six years. It's now two NCAA tournaments, one NCAA tournament win. This team was in the top 10 of the AP poll at one point and then wasn't even close to the bubble on Selection Sunday. What do you make of this weird situation the city is in with it's most beloved athlete, perhaps, of all time, because it's it's gotten a little uncomfortable for obvious reasons. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to Josh Pashner yesterday, and yeah. we were talking about Memphis, and we were talking about uh, Penny Hardaway. And, you know, Josh said that when he first got there, he kept trying to hire Penny to be on his staff for a while, and Penny didn't want the job. And then when Penny ended up uh, being in a position to get the job, Josh tried to tell him not to take it. And the the reason being because he is so beloved in that area and he 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 bleeds blue for that university so hard that it may not be a winnable situation for him and he and Josh even brought up Larry Finch and what the 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 stress of that job how that affected Larry and if you go back you know Larry was as beloved in his time as Penny was in his you go back to it and at one time he had the program flying high and everything was great but when it started going bad 
it was stressful on Larry, and then the fans eventually kind of turned on Larry as well. So you know what, Larry, it's probably time for you to go. Well, similar situation now with Penny. It's almost impossible for a local guy seemingly to go in there and have long-term success, which is what the program needs and what the fans want. And Josh believed that it just probably wasn't going to happen for Penny. I thought Penny would do, let me say that, I, I thought his results would be better than they are right now. Now, Grant, he's had some issues with players and NCAA uh, investigations and things of that nature, who's eligible and who could be able to play. So he's had those issues, but at the same time, I just thought the level of players he would be able to bring in would be higher than he's been able to get so far. Um, and that's been the disappointing aspect, I think, for even fans, because they thought the same thing. They thought they'd probably be back to the John Calipari level of uh, five-star recruits and things of that nature. It just hasn't played out that way. And look, P Penny's a friend of mine. I, I, I consider him a friend. And, you know, you, you want your friends to do well. Um, and I'd love to see the city of Memphis have a college team that they can root for on that level once again. But for whatever reason, Gary, it's seemingly not working out. And I don't know how much longer he would want to stay in that situation, quite honestly, or the school would want to have him in that situation. Because you don't want, here's what you don't want. Here's what you don't want. You don't want to happen to what happened to Juwan Howard in Michigan to happen to Penny Hardaway in Memphis. That's right. Or, or what happened to Patrick Ewing at Georgetown to happen to Penny Hardaway at you, Memphis. You, don't want that. you just that's don't want that. The program doesn't right. want it, and hopefully the player doesn't want it either, or the coach that, now. That's right. Um, I do want to ask you, big headline in the NFL this weekend, Justin Fields traded to Pittsburgh for a six-round pick. I've read everything from, see, this is how Justin Fields is really viewed throughout the NFL, to, oh, wow, Pittsburgh fleeced Chicago. What's the truth? I think it's somewhere in the middle, quite honestly, right. because here's the deal. If Chicago really wanted to get more for Justin Fields, they would have held on to him probably into training camp or maybe the first couple of weeks of the season, right? Because as you get closer to the game starting and things happen in training camp, we've seen quarterbacks get hurt in training camp. We've seen players get uh, hurt, pardon me, in the first game. We saw it with Aaron Rodgers, right? So you, they, they could have held out longer and maybe tried to get more value for him. But it was clear that the organization wanted to do right by Justin and put him in a position early enough that he can go on about his career. They said that from the very beginning. And we never see that in professional sports, especially in the NFL. So I say kudos to them for doing that. But I also think that speaks to Justin's uh, relationship with that organization his three years in Chicago and how, how much they respected him. And they didn't want to put him in a bad situation for the rest of his career. And they did that. Pittsburgh, they were just chilling. right? They were <laughs> cool. They had a starting quarterback. They had a couple backups until Kenny Pickett did didn't want to be the backup, so they had to move him. And by the time they moved, it was like, oh, wait. Well, let's see if Chicago wants to, you know, give up Justin Fields right now. They didn't have to make the deal. So, again, Gary, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, I don't say they got fleeced, but they were willing to move Justin to a place, and they weren't trying to hold him hostage in order to get something better for them. Last thing before I let you go. Uh, in golf, Scotty Scheffler, final round 64 yesterday, 20 Dude. under at the players. He's now won back-to-back -back players' championships, back-to-back -back PGA Tour events. He's made $8.5 million the past two weeks. And I read this from Kyle Porter at CBS Sports. He said if every uh, – he said if a golfer – he wrote this. If a golfer played every round at last week's Arnold, Arnold Palmer Invitational and at this mm -hmm. week's players' championship to the field average, that player would be two under after two weeks and 144 holes. Scotty Scheffler was 35 under. Yes. What are we watching right now? You're watching one of the, the, the great runs in modern professional golf. Um, and his talent is clearly there. And the confidence in his game now may be the highest it's ever been. And that's dangerous when you have someone of his ability. And first time that's ever happened at the players that someone has won back-to-back -back titles and they've played that tournament now for 50 years. Right. First time it's ever happened. And we hadn't had back to back winners on the PJ Tour. If you go back to the FedEx Cup playoffs, it happens typically. Uh, Victor Hovland did it because he won the event before the Tour Championship. Then he won the Tour Championship. But prior to that, you had to go back almost more than a year when Tony Finau did it um, on the PJ Tour, the win in Detroit. And I forgot what the other one was. So it's been a while that even back to back winners. But again, to your point, it's, it's the scores he's putting up in relation to the field. That's where you that's where you measure someone's greatness compared to their peers at the time. And Scott is just on a different level, man. To shoot 64 on Sunday, um, five shots down 
And that's also the largest lead overcome in the final round of the Players' Championship to win. He, he's just on a remarkable tear. But it's funny, he was joking. Um, I think it was at Riviera earlier this year, you know, he's world number one again. And somebody yelled out, Scotty, congrats on being world number one. Only 11 more years to go, which would match <laughs> what Tiger was as the world number one. And, and like he even joked about it yesterday. He's like, yeah, I've got, you know, two uh, Players' Championships now. He has two. I've got one major. He's got 15. And I've got, right. what? eight wins and he's got 82 still a right. long way to go but the the dominance he's showing right now reminds us of how great tiger was. it's been fun to watch it has been fun to watch that is michael eves from espn make sure you're watching him on espn hosting sports center you can also find him on x at michael eves thanks brother i appreciate your time as always all right man be good all right that's michael eves from espn when we come back turn our attention to the nba Desmond Bain's back. Played for the first time in more than two months over the weekend. It was a loss to Oklahoma City, but still, it's nice to see Desmond Bain on the court. We'll talk Grizzlies next. Gary Parrish Show, presented by Ortho South. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does, too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board. A class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Today, we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Unscheduled and Ortho South understands this better than anyone. Since your injuries don't make appointments, you don't need to either. That's because Ortho South welcomes walk ins during the weekdays and the evenings and even on Saturday. So, next time an unforeseen injury makes an unscheduled appearance in your life, visit orthosouth.org. Find your nearest urgent care location. Just walk in, and Ortho South will take care of everything, especially you. Learn more at orthosouth.org. That's orthosouth at orthosouth.org. Now I got five more things you need to know. Number one. Desmond Bain made a return to the Memphis Grizzlies lineup this weekend. Played against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Final score, 118-112 visitors. As usual. As usual. But Desmond Bain did play 32 minutes. 7 of 17 from the field. 4 of 9 from 3. 22 points. Plus 11. Plus 11. You know what that tells me, Bennett? Hmm. Wasn't, his, wasn't his fault. What no, his, no, it was not his fault. It was, well, it wasn't his fault. Hey, you were in the building. I wasn't. I was up here. You were in the building. What'd you make of Desmond Bain's return? It was just good to see him kind of pick up where he left off. Um, 
I didn't expect to see him have some massive game. I didn't even think I expected him to score over 20 points in a game. Um, or play 32 minutes. I bet you didn't think that. No, not at all. And, and he looked good out there, um, looked fresh. I, I just – I I was – Super happy with everything that went down, and as far as like the game goes, I mean, whatever. It's, whatever. It, it, it is what it is. What it is. But it was good seeing him back. Um, you know, it was wrestling night, by the way, downtown. Oh, did, you don't. You don't have to tell me. Bennett. It was. It was wrestling night. That scoundrel Jeff Jarrett came and tried to ruin the festivities. But he's been doing that for decades. If there's been, one thing, if there's one thing I know about Jeff Jarrett, it's that he's a scoundrel who will try to ruin things. Yeah, so he he showed up and tried to ruin the so we had, we had a big celebration uh, for Jerry the King Lawler. Dave Brown was there. They they honored him, and made a nice belt for the king and and yeah. Jeff Jarrett, that scoundrel. They yeah. took the belt. He had this big giant dude come out and steal the belt from Lawler. But ultimately, ultimately, Grizz came and saved the day. Thank God. Yeah, Grizz came and saved the day. Beat a bunch of people up, and uh, and, and the king got his belt back. It was a nice ending to wrestling night. Um, and also awesome to see Desmond Bain back. All's well that ends well. If there's That's one right. thing I know about that Jeff Jarrett, it's mm -hmm. that that scoundrel, oh, buddy, if he sees you with a belt, he'll sure try to take it. If there's yeah. one thing I, I know about that Jeff Jarrett over the years, but thank God we had Grizz there to save the day. That's right. That's right. All right. So the Grizz dropped to 8-27 and 27 inside FedEx Forum. That's the bad news. But you know what the good news is, Bennett? What's the good news? I mean, I don't know if it's good news. What? But, I mean, you know what the— uh, you know what the other news is? Mm. They playing tonight, and it ain't at home. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we're try I told you we're trying to get that above 500 road record to finish the season, man. We're, we're looking we're for positives here. We're, we're three games away right now, 15 and 18 on the road, heading into tonight's game in Sacramento. Are you ready to stay up late tonight, Bennett? Oh, yeah. I'll stay up yeah. late. I don't lie. I would, I would, the, these are tough. These are tough. Like it, it, it'd be different if there was some stuff at stake here. Uh, and and we, again, we're trying to finish above five hundred on the road this season. That's right. So maybe maybe that's the stakes, right? But yeah, nine p.m. tip against Sacramento. That's going to be a tough one. But I'll be there. I'll be there. Grizz are eleven and a half point underdogs, so they're really going to have to overcome some 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 obstacles to improve to sixteen and eighteen on the road tonight to to, to get to within two games of five hundred in road games on the season. It's not looking. It, it's not looking great, Bennett. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. But that, that's okay. We'll find. Hey, we'll find something else to motivate us. The rest. We'll of the find way. something okay. else. To, hey, yeah. And here's the other, here's the other thing. We don't have to motivate ourselves that much longer. All no, right. No. Yeah. We got. I think we got six more home games left. Um, oh, we've man, actually got. Good. Believe it or not, we've actually got good home games the rest of the way. I know there's only six. I know the Kings coming. The Kings coming twice. Um. I believe the Nuggets are coming in. Um, Philly's going to be here. So you got some good home games the rest of the way, actually. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait either. I can't wait either. Grizz Kings tonight. Bennett's going to be picking it a little later on. So don't Great. don't go no don't go nowhere. You ain't going to want to miss that. Number two, Deion Sanders. You know Coach Prime. I do know Coach Prime. Yes. He was talking about Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears. Did you see what the Deion Sanders said? He said. Uh, he said, uh, "He said, let me tell you something I have a problem with. I said, oh, wow. He was on a Sirius XM radio. I, he said, uh, let me tell you something I got a problem with. I said, okay, okay, P Coach Prime, let's hear it. He said, this kid can flat out play. I think he's the best quarterback on the board this year for sure, but he's coming from California. And before that, he was in Oklahoma, right? Chicago's cold. You better be careful. Long story not so long, Deion Sanders is suggesting that Caleb Williams might not be everything he could be in the NFL if he's drafted by Chicago because uh, he's been playing quarterback in California and before that Oklahoma, and they can't match the cold of Chicago, and therefore he will not be able to properly adjust. Deion Sanders went on to say that he would not want his own children going to play in Chicago because it's just too cold and nobody should do that. <laughs> okay, well, fair enough, Coach. <laughs> I actually think there's something to be said for okay. not wanting to be in a place that's super cold, just like quality of life. I actually understand that. Yep. I do not think where Caleb Williams played college football would uh, – I don't think I would let that move me to reconsider taking him 
based on the average temperature no, I don't in, so. in Chicago in the winter. I don't think that would be a part of my quarterback evaluation. You want to know why? Why? Well, there's a lot. There's like a million reasons why it doesn't make sense. But among them is that, yes, he played college football in Oklahoma and after that in California. But before that, he's from Washington, D.C. You know, he's like it's not like he grew up in West Palm Beach. You know, he's right. from Washington, D.C. He's played in cold weather before. Beyond that, like when you think of cold weather in the NFL, what do you think of? What comes to mind? Cold weather NFL, name it. Buffalo. Okay, try again. Uh, Kansas City. Oh, Jesus. Bennett, this is not going well. What do you try mean? One. Cold weather in the NFL, what do I think of? I thought I would say cold weather in the NFL, and you would go, ooh, frozen tundra, and then you'd. I thought you'd say Green Bay. Oh, so, my bad. Yeah, Green Bay's Green Bay's a good one. We should have worked on that. Yeah. Okay. I thought my, but, my two were pretty good. Yeah, no, they were cold. They were cold. Yeah. They've they both been cold. Yeah, um, I mean, I, dude, I, people in Kansas City had to get their freaking limbs amputated from that cold weather game. You see? You see? You see? I think they've taken the crown. We had literal fans literally getting appendages amputated because wow. of that cold weather game this year. Bennett, I want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not questioning your answers, the validity of them. You you provided me with two perfect answers. They were good answers. It's just not the answer I needed to make my I got point. You. I got I'm not you. critical of your answers. It's just not the answer I needed. The way that was supposed to say go is I was going to say, Bennett. Here's re here's among the reasons it doesn't really make any sense. And there's a million, but like just like you know. There's like few right at the top. Caleb Williams, he's from Washington, D.C., for crying out loud. It's not like he's from uh, San Diego. And then beyond that, beyond that, like when you think of cold in the NFL, what do you think of? Green Bay. Okay. Who is Green Bay's greatest quarterback of all time? Uh, Brett Favre. Aaron Rodgers. Damn it. You always answer the wrong things. Is Aaron the greatest? I think so. What, don't most people say that? I don't know, man. They both only got the one Super Bowl. I might have to go with the old gunslinger. I know, but most people, there, there are some people who say Aaron Rodgers might be the best quarterback of all time. And nobody says Brett Favre might be the best quarterback of all time. So I just, from that, uh, from that, I just reached the conclusion that Aaron Rodgers must be the greatest Green it's, Bay quarterback it's, it's of all time. Rogers. It's probably Rodgers. Okay, let's try this again one more time. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of reasons, Bennett, while what Coach Prime said maybe doesn't make any sense. Like a whole long list of them, but just like a few at the top. First off, Caleb Williams is from Washington, D.C. It's not It's not like he's from, uh, you know, it's not like he's from Cancun, you know. He's played in cold weather before. And then beyond that, just like cold weather, like Bennett, when you think of cold weather in the NFL, what do you think of? Oh, of course, Green Bay. And who is Green Bay's, like, Greatest quarterback of all time. I think it's our future vice president, Aaron Rodgers. And where is Aaron Rodgers from? He's from California. Did it did it bother him? I don't think it did. So then what are we doing? Well, What are we even talking hang about? Hang on now. Aaron Rodgers is a different breed. He is a different breed. He turns, <laughs> I mean, sometimes, that dude's different. <laughs> sometimes he turns the lights off. He just sits in the dark for a few days, which yeah, is a wild thing to do. That dude, I don't know if Caleb Williams built like that. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. You know what? How about this? I don't have any idea whether Caleb Williams is going to be awesome or not awesome in Chicago. I just don't I don't think the weather will be what determines that. Although I have thought about this in other ways. Like in baseball, if you were a pitcher and you and you you were a free agent and Colorado offered you the best contract. Mm -hmm. But you know you're going to go there, play an altitude, that giant field in Denver, and just, like, you're going to give up. Like, your ERA and all those numbers that are, you know, when I was a kid, on the back of your baseball card forever, yep. all those numbers are going to be inflated because you played in Denver as a pitcher. Just like if you play in Denver as a hitter, your numbers might be inflated. So I've always wondered, like, if I were a pitcher, if I were somebody who was chasing Cy Youngs and that type of stuff, would I pass on the opportunity to play in Denver simply because I make my job undeniably harder by having to pitch home games in that park, in that altitude? What do you think of that? I, I think it's a fair point. I mean, also, who wants to go play in Colorado anyways? <laughs> There you go. Yeah. There you Although go. Although they do have a World Series. I, I should be nicer. Yeah. You should. Yeah. It's just, I, 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 I do think that there's um, – are, are, are we moving on to the next Not one? yet. Not yet. Okay. I do, <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do think there are reasons 
to want to play somewhere and not to want to play somewhere. And it can even be connected to geography or um, climate. All of that stuff makes sense. Yeah. I don't think Caleb Williams playing college football in Oklahoma and USC, I don't think that's a reason for Chicago to maybe be hesitant to select them if they want to because it's very cold in Chicago and not very cold in Oklahoma. Well, they got no choice and, now. They just traded away California. Justin Fields. They just traded away Justin Fields. Yeah. They got no choice now. They're stuck with him. <laughs> They're stuck with him, for better or worse. We'll see how it goes. I don't really care. Number three. The Rock was in FedEx Forum on, on Friday night. Guess you were was. there. I was you were there. there. Yes. I was watching on TV. I was sitting right here in this exact same chair oh, look watching at on TV. Look at the B-roll, courtesy of yours truly. Oh, that's Big Bet Bennett. Mm -hmm. Videographer Big Bet Bennett. Mm -hmm. that's what oh, that looks, like, that looks like an iPhone 10 to me, Big Bet Bennett. <laughs> it is an iPhone it's, uh, it's the X. <laughs> it's the X. I got a new one. I gotta go. I gotta get everything transferred over. Man, we can't be sit We can't be using Bennett's videos. Get me Devin's well, videos. We can't, we can't. We can't use the. We yeah. We can't use the official WWE videos. I had, to, I had Devin, to pull my own. Give me Devin's videos. Hey, I know Devin ain't rocking an X. Shout Devin out would to never Devin. rock an X. Shout out to Devin because we were. We initially had seats a little bit higher up, and I ran into Devin in the plaza. It was me and Noah. And, and I was like, where are you sitting? Where are you sitting? He's like, man, they gave me good seats. He's like, I got some extras. Y'all want to come down? And we sat with him. Dude, he brought, those were good seats, man. Yes. Shout yes. out to Devin. Shout out to De Devin for no, hooking Devin up. Devin will take care of you. De Devin will take yep. care of you. I, I can make the argument. Devin's the MVP of Grind City Media. If you want me to make the argument, I can mm -hmm. try to make it. I like, hey, I hooked Devin up at the golf tournament. Oh, you did? I, I, get, I gave him a, I gave him a, a, a members only pass nice. so, that he could, so that he could have access to all these things. I don't know. I don't know if I should be admitting to this. This could be a felony. Mm -hmm. I could be admitting to a felony right now. Maybe. But I, I just thought it was funny, Devin walking around members only. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> so, so hey, you know what? You just pay it forward always, right? Yep. I, right. I hooked I up Devin. I, I hooked up Devin. Devin hooked up you. And now you got to hook up somebody someday. What'd you think of The Rock? He made a joke at John Morant's expense. Was that over the line? No. And you know what's cool about that whole thing is the fact that people didn't really listen. It, it was it was wild in the moment, but like he even when the rock did it, he was like, "We love you, Ja," like at the Close. end right after he said it. You and, can tell you can tell he was like, "I'm going to do it, but I don't really want to do it, but I'll do it." That's yeah, what it felt like. And like the just everything that I saw after the fact, nobody was like the, the, you know, that happened a long time ago. Blah, blah, blah. No, people laughed. Even Ja kind of joked about it yes, on Twitter. Right. Like, dude, yeah. yeah ja it, handled it. Ja handled it the right way. You have to laugh at that. You have, you have to, to laugh at it. You have to acknowledge it because everybody else is. And then you have to laugh about it because everybody else is. Ja handled that the right way. You can get mad about it if you want to, but like, you know, you'll be the only one mad. Everybody else will just right. be laughing. Yeah. Um, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be the only one mad. Dude. It was awesome, and the the overall show like they had some good dark matches. Like Ray Ripley wrestled, and, and Cody came out and wrestled Drew. That's McIntyre. wild that they do that like that. That's they, they they those people are stars. Yeah, and they they travel them to Memphis, and 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 make them work off TV. Right, that's wild to me. I like I would like to read a deep dive on WWE superstars compensation and they're like the language in their contract i guarantee you the biggest stars like the rhea ripley's and the cody Rhodes and the i guarantee you they ain't making what they ought to be making do you realize they are more or less think of them this way don't even think about them as wrestlers think about them as athletes that can sell out arenas mm -hmm. twice a week all right and or the stars of some of the highest rated television shows on cable or on, on, t on TV period. Yeah. Okay. That's what they are. Yep. If you can not think of them as wrestlers and think of them as in some ways they are like television stars, like what do television stars make? All right. Cause that's what they are. They're television stars. They're doing big numbers on TV at least twice a week. And they're also like, they're filling up arenas. And moving merchandise, you know, the same way Giannis does. And 
and Jason Tatum does. So, like, what should that be worth? And I read one time where Roman, what Roman Reigns was reportedly making, and he's like the face of this thing for multiple years now. Mm. And I don't want to say the number because it might have been wrong. I didn't confirm it, and I don't even know if I remember it correctly. But it was dramatically lower than if you think about what somebody who is the star of a TV show and somebody who fills up arenas consistently. Think about what that person should be making in America in 2024. Yeah. It's, it, seemed, uh, it seemed low relative to what I would imagine their real worth is. So I was I was surprised. I, I guess I knew they did dark matches after, you know, the TV show went off. But to have, like, that Cody Rhodes is, like, might be the undisputed champion here yeah. in a month. And Rhea and Ripley have, is, yeah. And Rhea Ripley is. And to just have them working in FedEx Forum off camera, I don't know. It just seems like if I were that level of star, I might be going, eh, if you want me to travel to Memphis, put me on a TV show. Otherwise, I'll just meet you. I'll meet you in Raleigh on Monday. Yeah, and I get why they did it because the overall, like the Rock thing was incredible, but the overall show wasn't amazing. Like they had some kind of lower. There, there was a. Really I will tell you. I, I would tell you sitting in the hotel room. I, you know, I had basketball on obviously, but I yeah. had I had SmackDown on too. And the Rock thing, you know, that was like a thirty minutes of the two hour yes, show. It was. I mean, they, they ate up a quarter of the show just with the Rock, and like I didn't really care about the. It was fine. I I enjoyed. The Rock on the mic the Friday before, and every other time more than I enjoyed the the singing. I didn't care about oh, that. Oh, I disagree, GP. Oh no, I just like him on the mic talking. I get, I I agree. I thought that in leading up to this, so many people were like, he, you know, I can't wait to see what he does. He's gonna eviscerate Memphis. Like we'll see. And the whole time I stood on, no, he's not. He is going to show love. It's going to be different than what he's doing in these other cities. And that's exactly how it went down. And, man, it was really cool to see that. Like, he legitimately loves this place. And that's one of the biggest stars in the world, man. Like, he he could have stayed in his heel character, and he just showed love for, you know, the majority of that to the city of Memphis. And and the fans gave it back to him. And, and that was really cool. Like, you didn't really hear many boos at all during that segment. It was all love for The Rock. Uh, and that I think, I, and I think cool. that, that's that's neat for Memphis, and I think people, you know, wrestling fans elsewhere like recognize that he made a big deal, like the biggest star in the industry in this moment, and one of the biggest of all time, made a big deal about being back in Memphis, you know, in the lead up to WrestleMania. Yeah, like that was a, that's a sweet. You didn't have to do that. No. Like, it seems like he really does have an affection for this place. Oh, yeah, he said um, he did finally The Rock has come back home. I was like, there let's you go. go, dude. Let's go, Rock. Put a tear in my eye, Rock. It really did. I was damn near getting emotional. Get my a little kid, emotional. My kids chant, Rocky, Rocky. It was awesome. It was. I did think after that was over, the rest of the show was like, eh. Yeah, I the, didn't care. Uh, the Randy Orton, um, Randy, Randy Orton's Orton, awesome. Grace Waller, that was cool. And then KO came out. Logan Paul came out. That was a lot of fun. Everything else was whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Randy, seeing Randy Orton's cool. Seeing The Rock is cool. Uh, you know, Logan Paul's a star. He just is. Well, you can like him or not, but he's a big deal. Oh, dude. And you know what's crazy is we were sitting around a lot of kids. And you, you've talked about this a lot with your kids. And you're right. The kids are love him it does love not him. matter that he's a villain like they love all the kids around us i swear when no one got more excited it was when he came out that was the most excited those kids were the entire night was when logan paul came out i cannot get into my car with my kids without them saying dad can we stop by and they will name a specific store not just like the store they'll be like dad can we stop by the kroger buy mom store or whatever right and i'm like well yeah why because they got a new rare prime there now i want to be clear they never have a new rare prime at kroger in south haven that's not where rare primes go i don't even know if rare prime is a thing yeah. all right but my kids are constantly convinced that rare primes are 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 all around us yeah and they 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 forever want to go purchase them yeah like like every time i get in the car it's like uh dad can we go here yeah for what? Well, this new Prime came out. Oh, it's a new Prime came out. They love Logan Paul. Oh. Lo I mean, they, they, I, I told, it's the power of the iPads and yeah, iPhones. Man. Yep. 
when I was a kid, if you wanted to be famous, you needed to be on television. Now that ain't where the fame, that's not where young people notice people. It's not on TV. Mm-hmm. There ain't there ain't a 10 year old in the world who saw me on TV last night. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. But 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 they might see me today on TikTok or Instagram or something like that. We were in the Atlanta airport in the Delta Sky Club, and this guy walks by. I've never seen him in my life. My kids flipped out. This was last summer. Oh, that's so-and-so, so-and-so. I'm like, who is that? Oh, he's on YouTube. Just some YouTube star. Yep. They recognize him like he was, you know, like, like if Denzel Washington just walked in. That's what it was like. They like, oh. This person is just as famous in their world, in fact, more famous in their world than anybody you're going to see headlining a movie these days. So, and Logan Paul is that that's where he originated. He 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 became who he is off of that. And so I think it's actually brilliant that WWE has tapped into this. A, he's good at it. He's good at it. Yeah. But but B, he brings an audience like to the table that Otherwise, might not be there. So you think about what they're doing right now. They reconnect with the previous generation by bringing back The Rock. They've got a young generation bringing them to the table because of the Logan Paul angle. Like it, it, They're taking Raw to Netflix, mm-hmm. which is going to make it available to a younger generation in ways that it might not otherwise be. It, it, you know, outside of all the lawsuits and like sex trafficking and stuff, feels like WWE's in a pretty good place right now. I think they are in a good place. Uh, I got to mention this too because Devin just said something about it. Um, there was a guy sitting in front of us. These are the worst kind of wrestling fans. There's this dude sitting in front of us, and you know, like, you know how you could buy like the kids' belts, like our kids have, like, and they're sure. just like, yeah. Dude, this man had like the real belts and he kept messing up my videos because he kept holding up his free. These are like $500 belts. He had three oh, of them. Yeah, like the real belts. The Why championship. Are you thinking- okay. This is a grown man and he was ruining my damn videos, kept holding up his freaking belt. I'm like, dude, put that down. Like, nobody cares. Why like, do you think? It- why do you think a grown man is carrying around a five hundred dollar wrestling belt? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like it's, I love it. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. I love I it. Like it I, too. I, I I watch it every Friday, every Monday. I watch all the live events. I love it. If you ever see me just walking around seriously with a five hundred dollar wrestling belt, like if you see me trying to be goofy, then recognize I'm trying to be goofy. Mm-hmm. But if you ever see me seriously, like just walking around. With a five hundred dollar wrestling belt, smack smack me in the head and be like, GP, you got to get it back under control. And like he kept, you've lost your way. And like he kept that that video that we played of the I had to cut it off at the beginning because his freaking belts. Are the, I'm like, dude, he does not care about your belt. Like, put that <laughs> down. <laughs> Make a sign or something, dude. You could save you know a couple hundred dollars. Oh, there's the other one, sign guy. Oh, like, I like, like sign guy. I like sign do. guy. It just seems like it's a lot of work to stand there and hold a sign for two hours. No, they did the um, the, you know, they did during the. I will say the the one thing that's cool is during the commercial breaks they're always doing stuff, and right. it, during one of the commercial breaks they were going around to all the signs and reading them, and there was some really creative ones. Some of them are stupid, but like there was some really good ones too. I and I felt bad because my kid, as soon as we get there, was like. Dad, let's make a sign. And I was like, buddy, we don't have we don't have the stuff. We we have to do that before we show up. And he was like, I want to make a sign. I want to make it. But, you know, I screwed up that. Well, at least you got to go. I was here in New York, and I, I intentionally didn't spend the week last week. Like, I, I went out of my way to never mention to my kids that this is the week that SmackDown's at FedEx Forum. Mm-hmm. I just didn't, I just was like, maybe they won't even notice, you know, maybe they, cause we watch it together, but I was like, you know, I'm out of town there with, you know, I'm not there to say, Hey, like, Hey, remember guys, SmackDown's on. Maybe they won't, uh, maybe they won't even notice. And then I got a FaceTime right in the middle of the show. Tears. Mm, They caught on. Felt sick, Bennett. They caught on. No, they'll be back. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Nothing. Obviously, nothing's been announced. But that was a sold out show. And and granted, The Rock was there, so that was a big deal. But WWE always <laughs> does good here, so they'll be back next year. 
the know. the history of it the history of it on, on that, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong I, it feels like this is the history of it since I've been paying attention is that we usually get one SmackDown a year and one Raw a year yeah and I'm hoping I mean dude who knows like maybe we could get a pay per view at some point the the thing the problem with the pay per views now me and Devin were talking about this is you don't have as many as you used to that aren't you know the big ones are going to be at football stadiums, right? WrestleMania, mm -hmm. SummerSlam, um, Royal Rumble, all that stuff's going to be at a football stadium. But then the other thing is you've got a lot of pay per views now that are going overseas. Like some of the, the some of the smaller ones are going to Germany or going to Saudi Australia, Arabia, Australia. So you probably only got five maybe that are going to just be pay per views in an arena. So, right. but hopefully we can get one again one day. I think the last one we had was Fast Lane, like maybe. Early mid two thousands. So, hey, dare, hey, dare amazing. to dream, Bennett. Dare yeah. to dream. Be if fun. you can't, if you can't dream on the day after Selection Sunday, I don't know when you can. Number four, Dave Roberts, Dodgers manager, said uh, this weekend that Shohei Otani might play in the field this season. Hasn't started throwing yet. Had elbow surgery, you might remember. Mm -hmm. Not going to pitch this year. They have already decided that. But Dave Roberts said, you know what? We might throw him out in the field every once in a while. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't really care about that. What's interesting about it is that as I'm reading the story, it uh, it was wild that it just sort of popped in there. And the Dodgers opened the season Wednesday in Korea against the Padres. Did you realize that Major League Baseball season, though the Orioles, the Mets, most teams don't start till next week. Major League Baseball season technically gets started in two days on Wednesday on another continent. No, I had no idea. I had no idea, and I fancy myself as a baseball fan. What's the game again? The Dodgers and the Padres, they're in Seoul, South Korea. That's actually – they're getting a good game, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah and these are like real games. Like, they're going to count. Like, uh, yeah. um, like you, Darvish, is pitching for the Padres, and Otani will be in the lineup for the Dodgers. It's just – I don't – Major League, ba the start of baseball is supposed to be a thing. Yes. And I don't, and I don't think we should be starting it in the in Seoul, South Korea, a week earlier than everything else. I object. I think I object too. Opening day, it's got to be like the everybody's everybody at the same time, you know, bouncing around, bouncing around to the different ballparks. That's what I'm here for. It's just supposed to be, you're supposed to wake up and go, it's opening day. Yep. And now it's like, you're going to wake up next Thursday and be like, Hey, it's opening day. Except the Dodgers been playing for a week. What? Yep. Um, I don't I, like, I object. I don't like it. I think I, I like, object to, I don't know if you've been paying attention. You know, uh, the Baltimore Orioles playing the grapefruit league. Um, yeah, of course. The, not the Cactus League. Uh, your no. Mets, are, your Mets are actually fifth in the Grapefruit League, so having a decent spring training. Uh, I, I've, Orioles, I've decided. Though, yeah, go I, ahead. I, 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 I'm gonna let you get back to the Orioles. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, uh, I've decided. I'm just a because of the bandwidth. I'm just I'm overwhelmed right now. I don't have time to dig in and like really care and pay attention closely. Um, I'm just, I can't wait for opening day. I ain't going to get too caught up in like, well, who's going to be, you know, the third starter. I'm just going to let it play out. I'm going to be excited when opening day gets here and I'm going to be excited every day until they're eliminated. And that's how I'm going to enjoy this baseball season, but I'm not going to get my expectations up or even think about it much until the games start next week. Is that a proper approach? I think it's a proper approach and I'll approach it the same way, even though my Baltimore Orioles are a league best 18 and five in spring training. So, you know, I'll just leave that there. Bennett, Bennett's got a spring training juggernaut on his hands. I'm excited, man. I'm I'm actually excited about this season. It's been a, it's been a long time since I've been excited for the start of the Major League Baseball season. I'm always excited for the start. I'm never excited for the end, but I'm always <laughs> right. I'm always I'm always I'm always depressed by the end. But it's I'm always excited for me. It's I'm always excited for me. I'm always excited at the beginning and then depressed by the end. It's more or less like a trip to Vegas. Baseball season is for me. Yeah. You you get off that plane and oh, buddy. You ain't never been so excited. Right. The contrast between folks getting off a plane, arriving in Las Vegas, and boarding a plane, leaving Las Vegas, the contrast between those two people, there's no bigger contrast in any airport in the world. Right. There's no city that, that, 
that gets you as excited and then beats you down the way Las Vegas does. And that's the way baseball season is for me. I get real excited at it when I when I when I land. Woohoo, I'm here. Baseball season. Let's go. By the time it's time to leave baseball season, I've had enough. Yeah. I've 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 had 162 games of disappointment, typically. But how about this? Opening day at City Field. You know when it is? Hmm. It's next Thursday. Oh, so you're gonna be in New York. If I have a late call time, I'm gonna go to the game. Mets Brewers. Yeah, City. You I've never go. I've never been to an opening day. I've never been to an opening day, you know, because it coincides with bas- uh, basketball season. But if I have a late call time on next Thursday, I fly here next Wednesday. If I have a late call call time next Thursday, I can make a 110 first pitch, maybe catch six innings, and then take the train right back into CBS Broadcast Center. I think I can make it work. But I might be watching baseball next week. Let's go. I will Let's be. go. Let's go. Number five. Wild story. Wild story. What's going on? In Nashville. It's in the great city of Nashville. I like Fellow Nashville. Named, so do I. Mm-hmm. So do I. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I like Nashville, okay? Yeah, yeah just because you're jealous of Nashville, some people, doesn't mean you have to hate Nashville. No, it's a nice little getaway. It's a nice little getaway. Yep. Except for that Missouri student. Did you read about that fella? Yeah, what ha- what happened there? Do we have I, any clarity on what what I, happened? I'm hesitant to speak on it because I haven't I haven't done my normal deep dive on it. Yeah, you know, like I like I typically would, like when, when that little blonde girl went missing in the national park. Right. Like we right. got we like we got into that one. Yes. Right. I ain't got into this one the way I wanted to get into it the way I should. So I'm hesitant to speak on. It. Sounds like he might have just fallen in the river. Yeah, he was drunk. Or, or yeah. allegedly, because I think yes. there was some security cam footage of him leaving a bar. I mean, he's just, looking he's kinda, just stumbling. Yeah. He's stumbling yeah, yeah. around like he's very drunk. He's just like out of it. And he's just like stumbling around. And there are even like homeless people who said, oh, yeah, we saw that guy. Yeah. Like the the investigators have gone around like speaking to everybody. So they went to multiple homeless camps and multiple homeless camps were like, yeah, we saw that dude run around. He was messed up. And then what? But don't know what happened to him. But like his phone, the last ping is right next to a river. Oh, Jesus. It's like, yeah, it's not. It ain't great. No. It ain't great. So is Nashville a fun getaway? I think so. But, like, are there also risk involved? I guess so. Yeah. Either way, this story's got nothing to do with that. Okay. This story's about a fellow named Blaze Taylor. You know Blaze Taylor? The name sounds familiar. Well, he used to scout for your Tennessee Titans. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not super familiar with the scouting department. Well, he used to work in it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty dialed in. I'm not as familiar with the scouting department, but... Okay, Blaze Taylor. Okay. Son of Trooper Taylor. All longtime right. college football coach. Was at Tennessee. Is now at Texas A&M. And Blaze Taylor, after playing at Arkansas State, working for the Titans, is currently employed, still at this moment, technically, by Texas A&M. He, he's a member of the Texas A&M football program. Okay. Charged with first-degree murder for allegedly poisoning his girlfriend, who was pregnant six months with his child. Jeez. Allegedly did it last year in Nashville. Grand jury returned an indictment, and he's now facing first-degree murder charges. He went to her apartment. This is the story. Okay. Went to her apartment. Calls 911. 911, mm-hmm. emergency. How can we help you? However, they do it. Do I look like a 911 operator? No. However, they do it. And uh, he says, My girlfriend must be having an allergic reaction to something or something. I don't know what's going on, but can you send an ambulance? They send an ambulance and she she dies, baby dies. Everybody's dead. And, uh, you know, they clearly they're going to they're gonna look into that one, you know? Mm hmm. Have to. And they they found that she was poisoned. <laughs> That's it. Like you know, Dumbass. what is he doing? You can't get away with that one. You cannot. Get Not away like that. With that one. They will find it in your in your. There's something called an autopsy report. <laughs> like they're going there's, to find out what happened. There's a young woman who who is oh, you ready? Unmarried, pregnant, and like otherwise healthy, and now she just died in her kitchen. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to run some tests on this one, buddy. And then you know what they probably find? 
had a volatile relationship with the expected father. He's probably got three other girlfriends yep. in other parts of Nashville. Yep. Oh, buddy, I see where this one's going. Also, his name's Blaze. Also, his name's Blaze. Like, that's got a dead all- giveaway right there. Red flag, if I ever seen one. Yeah. You know? Like, Blaze just screams aggression. Something. How you just decide to poison your girlfriend? What a wild thing to decide to do. That is, yeah, that's that's outrageous. That's out of bounds, dude. <laughs> And even, even, it, of course it's out of bounds. Thanks for, thanks for acknowledging it's out of bounds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is out of bounds. I think we can all agree. It's out of bounds to poison your girlfriend. Uh-huh. I think we can all agree. I bet Blaze has a $500 wrestling belt at his house. There's no question. He seems I, like the type. How do you, how do you reach the, this guy, this guy's a college graduate. He's like a, 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 a member of society. He's mm-hmm. like a normal guy. He's got you know good parents i assume Mm -hmm. at least like you know successful parents best i can tell how do you think you just decide i'm gonna i'm gonna actually murder i'm just gonna murder this person because i actually presumably because i accidentally got her pregnant like wouldn't any option short of that be better And, and 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 by the way even if you quote get away with it aren't you always like doesn't that just carry – don't you just carry that around forever? Maybe not. I don't know how murder to do what they do. I don't either. That's why it's why we're so fascinated by them because we don't understand the psyche. I don't get the psyche, and I also just don't get the stupidity. Because, you know, obviously the worst part about murder is the murder. Yep. But, like, the stupidity connected to some of these murders just drives it, – it, that's – that, that drives me up the wall, Bennett. It? it really does me too. Blaze is an like, idiot. Like, Blaze is an idiot. You can't, you can't kill your pregnant girlfriend who I'm sure there's text message evidence of an argument with and expect to get away with it. No. Like, what are you doing? It's, just, it's not a thing you're going to get away with, especially in this way, because they're going to go, okay, she has insane levels of whatever in her system. How did they get there? Who was with her? You ready? I'm going to be lead investigator. Who was with her when she suffered this experience? Her boyfriend. Hmm. And you said she was pregnant? Yes. And they're not married? No. Interesting. Let's get the cell phones. Hmm. They've been arguing a lot. Oh, it seems pretty clear he didn't want this baby. And the levels of poison in her body were what? Yeah, I'm looking at this. He's still, oh, it's clear he didn't want this baby. Yeah, let's go talk to him. How do you think you're getting away with that? You're not. You're not, Bennett. That's the right answer. You're not. Bennett, when you think of cold in the NFL, what do you think of? Obviously, the Green Bay Packers. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Hey, in all seriousness, my condolences to, obviously, the victim and her family. Mm -hmm. But also, like, imagine your trooper, Taylor. What must this be like? You're a successful college football coach. You, you raised your son. He played college football. He got his degree. He's working in your industry. He works with you at Texas A&M. You brought him into the family business. Dang. And now he just murdered? What do you do? I feel I just, bad for Trooper. As a father, what? I feel bad for Trooper. Yes. Like, imagine if you you feel like you've done everything you should do properly as a parent, and at the end of the day, your kid still murders his girlfriend. Mm. That must be rough. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, don't murder. That's the don't lesson. Murder, it? Don't murder. Don't murder. Don't murder. Don't murder. Hey, Grizzlies back in action tonight. They're out in Sacramento. It's a late start. Bennett's going to pick it. Okay. We'll see how that goes next. We know there's only one team you want to watch. And Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Bally Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Bally Sports and streaming on the Bally Sports app. Bally Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. 
Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Presented by Ortho South. I'm in New York City. Ben Doyle back in Memphis inside the Built Ford Tough Studio FedEx Forum. Let's wrap this thing up with GP's carryout. It's time for GP's carryout. One final segment filled with stuff to take with you. It's not everything you need to know, but it's most of it. What did we learn today? A whole bunch of stuff, but in the first hour, we mostly focused on the NCAA tournament bracket unveiled last night on CBS, America's most watched network, Network of Stars. Adam Zucker, a friend and colleague, handled the selection show in the absence of Greg Gumbel. He was terrific. Greg uh, has family health issues that he's dealing with. So Adam Zucker stepped in and for the first time in I believe more than two decades, somebody other than Greg Gumbel uh, was handling the selection show. But Zook was great. We got the bracket. I don't have much complaining to do about who's in, who's out, because it's somebody who actually looked at the bottom of the bracket yesterday and tried to distinguish between, say, Texas A&M's body of work and Michigan State's body of work and Virginia's body of work and Seton Hall's body of work. I can tell you that it got very difficult at the bottom of the bracket. You were looking at teams that you saw, thought were safe three days ago and they don't seem safe anymore. That's a byproduct of a lot of things among them. Having five bid stealers, which shrunk the bubble by, by five spots. I mean, think about if you've got, this is what you always hear, right? 32 conference champions, auto bids, and 36 at largest. So think about if you got 36 chairs for a, for a, restaurant you got 36 seats mm -hmm. and you're like okay yeah i got room for you and i'm gonna have room for you and i got room for you but then at the last minute or in the you know final 48 hours 72 hours before you're gonna open your door somebody comes and takes five chairs well i thought i was gonna have room for you and i thought i was gonna have room for you but we just lost five chairs we only got 31 spots now that's that's more or less what happened so when you heard people Middle of last week saying things like, man, I think St. John's is safe. Or I think Seton Hall's got to be in. Or that should be, do it for Providence. Or, man, Indiana State, I don't see how you leave them out. Well, that might have been true with some of those teams. I know it was true with a few of those teams. Um, when you had 36 chairs 
But once somebody took five chairs and you only had 31, then you didn't have spots for some of these schools anymore. That's why anybody complaining about who got left out too intensely is like just not looking at the math of the situation. I would have had St. John's in over Virginia, but all of those teams in that range were very, very close, and they all had fall resumes. If they'd have won one more game, lost one less game, they'd have nothing to complain about. So I'm not interested in their complaints. Where I do think it got messy is the seeding. Mm. Iowa State should be a one seed, not a two, and certainly not the worst two. And when you make them the worst two, you don't just screw them. You know who else you screw? The best one, UConn. UConn's the overall number one seed. UConn should have the, the, the worst number two seed in their bracket. And they do based on the way the committee seeded this thing. But Iowa State has the fourth best resume in the sport. And by the time we got to the selection show, there were very smart basketball people, Jerry Palm, Seth Davis, um, suggesting that Iowa State had the best body of work in the country outside of Purdue, Houston, and UConn. I agree. And yet they get made the worst two seed by the selection committee. That's inexplicable. FAU as an eight makes no sense. Michigan State as a nine, no sense. Boise State in the first four, no sense. I won't argue about who got in, who got out, but the seeding is all, all wrong. Just like indefensively wrong. And um, when you hear people complaining about the selection committee or the bracket today, that's mostly what it's tied to. You got most of the teams right, whatever. But where you placed them in the bracket, that was way off. What's today's biggest game? NBA, Grizzlies, Kings, in Sacramento, Golden One Center. Nine o'clock tip. It's a late one, Big Bet Bennett. I don't know if you picked the game on Friday. I wasn't I wasn't here. The great Kelsey Wright Johnson hosted the show. Appreciate her. Appreciate we didn't her really pick always. it. We didn't really pick a game. Okay, then that means I got your record at 97, 103, and four. You're negative 17.3 units. If you lose tonight, you're down to 18, you're down 18.4 units. That'd be the most you've ever been down. That'd be the uh, it'd be low point. It'd be the low point of your life. This is tough. It this is tough. Is tough. Um, it is tough. Kings are 11 and a half point favorites. Your totals 221.5. Yeah, big number. We do have Jaron and Dez. Vince Williams Jr. is doubtful. Luke Kennard is out for personal reasons tonight. Um, I'm out for personal reasons as well. Man, the Kings are interesting. Uh, there's just no rhyme or reason to what's going on with them. I guess that's the that's just how an NBA season works, isn't it? Because um, they, they were in a close loss to the Knicks in their last home game, but then they blasted the Lakers and the Bucks before that. I'm going to say... I'm going to say that the Memphis Grizzlies cover... And I will take the Grizzlies plus 11 and a half. Big Bet Bennett, he believes in the Grizzlies on the road in California. He says take Grizzlies plus 11 and a half at Sacramento tonight. We'll see how it goes. What are we watching on TV? I mean, is it, we're watching Raw, right? I mean, we got to think we're watching we're, Raw. I think we're watching Raw. It's the, it's the, it's the buildup. It's the buildup. We're on the road to WrestleMania. Tonight, Becky Lynch against Nia Jax. Can I interest you in Becky Lynch against Nia Jax? Sure. How do you feel about Nia Jax? I don't love her so much. Uh, I, she's okay. I could take her or leave her, if I'm being honest with you. I do like Becky Lynch, though. I like Becky, too. I'll, I watch. Consider myself, I'll watch that match. Hey, favorite, favorite women's wrestler. Oh, Who's your, easy. Who? Uh, you mean like who's wrestling right, right now? Right now. Of all time and right now. Well, Rhea Ripley is my favorite right now that's wrestling. Um, Cakes. But I also love the Queen. I'm a big fan of the Queen, Charlotte Flair. I like Charlotte Flair. Yeah, but she's out right now. So we'll go Rhea Ripley. Um, all time. Ooh, that's a good question. All time. Um, and I liked Lita back in the day when she was with the Hardys. That they that was a good little faction. I was a fan. Um, maybe I'll go Lita. I think I like a Becky Lynch. I think Becky Lynch All is my time. favorite. 
I, maybe. Honestly, maybe. honestly, I, I, I gotta tell you, I think the queen is my all-time favorite. I, I like that red hair. I like that red hair Becky Lynch has. Becky's cool. Becky's cool. I, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go Lita or Charlotte Flair all time. I can't decide, but current Rhea Ripley. Becky Lynch, Nia Jax tonight, and then ooh, we got a contract signing tonight. Got a con? Can I interest you in a contract signing? Yeah, it's who's signing? Sa Sammy Zayn is signing a contract to fight Gunther. Yeah. At WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Title, I have a real problem with this. Some of the announcers call him Gunther, and then some of them call him Gunther. Like they, they we should figure that out. I mean, I th I'm pretty sure he's German. I think it's Gunther. I don't think it's Gunther. <laughs> I know, but like, not from watch tonight. <laughs> watch tonight. Watch tonight. Like Pat McAfee will be calling him Gunther. Yeah, I don't. And then, think the, that's and then it. the other fella be calling him Gunther. It just let's be consistent with it. I don't care what you call him. Let's just be consistent with it, right? Yeah, I think he's gonna lose his title. Gunther? Yeah, because I think he's gonna. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna start pushing him a little bit more. I think they're gonna take him out of that intercontinental championship realm and and make him try to make him more of a main eventer. Gunther? Yeah. Sami Zayn gonna get a championship then. That's what you're predicting. I just think that. The, he deserves one, doesn't he? People like Sami Zayn. I don't love they? Sami. He's great. I just think that Gunther, they want to, they want to push him a little bit more, and and you kind of you're in purgatory with that IC title. They want, they want to put him up a little bit more. Well, then don't you need him to like? You don't need him to lose. Well, what don't are you, you gonna need... do? Just forfeit your title to start yes. becoming more of a main eventer? Yes, I would catch it on fire. I'd burn it. Yeah, I'd burn it. I'd burn my Intercontinental title in the middle of the ring and say, "Bring me the big titles. This is too little for Gunther." That's what I would say, something like that. I'd burn my title. I'd say, this is too little title for Gunther. Bring yeah. me Roman Reigns. That's I'd what say I would that say. he's probably going to destroy Sami Zayn. Gunther's a big fella. Yeah, dude. Old school. Old school, big big German fella. Yep. I like Gunther. I, just I like wish him we'd too. Be a, I wish we'd be a little, a little more consistent with his name pronunciation. Mm -hmm. You know? we got to figure it, that out. If I had one wish in this world, that's what it would be tied to. Raw tonight, USA Network, 7 o'clock. What's the best thing we've read? Just go to CBSSports.com and read. Like, There's so many talented people writing about the NCAA tournament and the bracket and breaking it down. I don't really have time to do that stuff anymore. I just talk all day, every day. I just talk just like this. Like, I'm going to stop talking to you in a minute. I'm going to go talk to somebody else for the next few hours. Just be talking nonstop, right? Mm -hmm. But I used to, before I did this, I would write. I don't do that much anymore. It's not as much as I used to. But we still have people who do it, and they're great. So go read all their NCAA tournament coverage, cbssports.com. What's on tap for tomorrow? Tomorrow's Tuesday. Ben, I'm going to be in studio. God willing, of Let's course. Go. God willing, of course. I'm going to be in studio. I can't wait to be back, see your face in person. Can you promise me you'll wear like a Grizzlies or a Tigers or a Titans uh shirt or something yeah i got you i'll take All care right. of you <laughs> i know you do i know you do i, I might wear my do. new rock shirt you got a new rock shirt yeah it's sick i i know a lot of people bought it because they, they were out of them uh pretty quickly it's like a, it's like because he talked about wrestling at the memphis flea market and it's like a flea market poster and, and it's like finally the rock has come back to memphis and it's got him on the microphone it's got the date and everything that that it happened so it's cool i i won't wear it much because i it, it might be a collector's item one day but oh, i'll wear it oh, tomorrow you, oh you could you could be sitting on a t-shirt gold mine Bennett. exactly i should have bought two i should have bought two. Oh, the mistakes we make in life yep you know yeah. you know well, all right well i look forward to seeing that shirt tomorrow yeah man i'll wear a shirt too i don't know which one Good. yet I don't know which one, but I'll have one on. I promise. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll enjoy mine. Meet back here tomorrow at 10. Till then, be careful, be kind, be good. Rep your hood.